Vienna's history is closely connected with Jewish history. Before the annexation of Austria to Nazi Germany in 1938, the Jewish population was flourishing. Even decades later, Austria and Vienna are still coming to terms with the darkest time in their history. On this tour, we are walking in the footsteps of Jewish life in Vienna, its past and its present. We'll visit seven highlights with a total walking distance of about an hour. Starting at the Jewish Museum, we will visit the City Temple, the Shoah Monument on Judenplatz, explore Jewish life in Vienna's second district, and sip a drink at Tel Aviv Beach. Check out the description for more details. We want to bring back into the public consciousness of Austrians, but also of our guests from abroad, what was lost, what was here, but there are no traces anymore. So you can see that people lived really all around the city of Vienna, and unfortunately all of the synagogues that were located there were destroyed, apart from one, the city temple. Synagogues could have been built, mm -hmm. but they had to be hidden behind a facade. Here you can see the model of the synagogue, and you can see how cleverly the architect hid this beautiful, beautiful space within this um, house, which is not at all impressive from the outside. You would not expect what beautiful encounter you will have in a couple of minutes. But then if you enter, it's really stunning. It's a beautiful synagogue, and this is it's the only synagogue of Vienna that has survived the so-called November pogrom. Hey, how are you? You'll see in the second district, there are a lot of synagogues. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that on Shabbat, you're not allowed to walk further than two kilometers. Okay. So the Jews will usually meet in areas where there are synagogues within every two kilometers so that they wouldn't have to work in order to get there. And within the second, you'll see when we walk, there are very many synagogues. Okay. Norio Morjo is an entrepreneur, restaurant and bar owner, as well as a designer. He lives and works in the second district, which used to be the Jewish quarter. In recent years, Jewish life has grown more vibrant again in this area. So I have to ask, because I've been checking out your hat the entire time, is this also a tradition or is this something completely different? In the Jewish tradition, the men have to cover their heads and the black hat is very symbolic of Judaism. So for me, I'm a hat maker and I wanted to pay homage to this, but also add a twist and maybe represent the modern Jew and the young society, which wants to sort of break free of the old traditions and recreate them. And that's what this hat is to me. Visitors absolutely have to go to Judenplatz. This is the place where the Shoah monument of Rachel Whitred is located because the Jewish community in the Middle Ages was destroyed in 1421 and the huge synagogue that was located there was destroyed. And when the city decided that the Shoah monument should be built and the ground was opened up in the 1990s, by miracle, the, the fundaments of the medieval synagogue were found, which was really incredible. So if you visit the Shoah monument, you should definitely go downstairs and also visit this extremely important part of Jewish history in Vienna. The first Jewish community in the Middle Ages was destroyed in 1420 and 1421. It was located here in the center of the city on Judenplatz, around Judenplatz, where the Shoah monument is located today. And that was the second community that was located mainly here in the second district. This was when, when Jews had to live in the ghetto. The third community started around 1900. And unfortunately, with World War II, this whole life disappeared. But now it comes back again. Now we have a very, very lively street scene in the second district. We have a Jewish theater. We have several kosher butcher stores, grocery stores. We have supermarkets. We have restaurants. Right here we have a coffee house called Tachlis, which is an old Yiddish word. And it basically means, you know, get to the point. 
We have Tel Aviv Beach, of course, which is a, a meeting place not only for the Jewish community, for the Jewish youth groups, but also for everybody. It's a wonderful place to encounter. So Neni is a family business alone. The name represents us. It's Nuriel, Elior, Nadivi, Ilan, which is us four brothers. And uh, today we expanded into Berlin, Munich, Zurich, Hamburg. And then after Neni came, what was the next venture? So Tel Aviv Beach happened about a year after Neni. Okay, well, that's soon after. And it was actually a project together with the State of Israel to promote Tel Aviv as a city. Okay. And it was supposed to be only a half a year project. And it went so well, and the government was so happy with it that they asked us if we wanted to continue with it. And now, eight years later, we're here with Tel Aviv Beach, and we love it. So Jewish life came back to this area again, and this is wonderful to watch.